Welcome to Hungary, a country that struggled out, for, uh, out uh, democracy from tyranny 25 years ago. It uh, happened in uh, um, 1989. Then we re reorganized uh, our constitution on a new basis. Um, and in order to set the new constitution into action, we regularly held free elections and established independent institutions. The country's constitutions ensured the citizens' fundamental rights, and these fundamental rights were supposed by effective guarantees. An active constitutional court enforced the constitution with a wide jurisdiction, with regularly, which uh, regularly cut off the abuses of legislative power when it was needed. Political publicity was not uh, working properly, but was working sufficiently. Therefore, it was suitable for controlling the exercise of public power. Four years ago, the free elections resulted in a supermajority of the ruling party in the parliament. In consequence of this extraordinary electoral result, the new government felt to be qualified to alter the foundations of the state and the, and the political system. At first, it set its sights uh, on the political publicity. With a media authority vested with a superpower and with dim rules on the press uh, in a new media law, it was able to reach that the critic journalism nearly disappeared from the country. The parliament adopted some unconstitutional laws, and when the constitutional court uh, nullified one of them, the government rapidly restricted the authority of the court. In an extra extraordinary rapid procedure, it replaced the constitution with a new fundamental law. The uh, new constitutional framework imposed restraints on the fundamental freedom of citizens rather than on public power. It increasingly defines the legal framework in which the citizen's life is so supposed to fit. The fundamental law restricts individual freedom beyond the extent that is strictly necessary. Instead of limiting its intervention into citizens' uh, lives and the various relationships uh, amongst them, the Hungarian states now, state now uses law as leverage to claim the right to define the spheres of privacy and private relationships uh, among individuals. The fundamental law transgresses the principle that fundamental rights accrue to people and citizens in Italy by virtue of their being people and citizens. Furthermore, the government gained control over the independent institutions and made so relative the control of public institutions realized by the system of checks and balances. Stru the structure of constitutional institution fails to meet uh, the principle of division of powers. The system is based rather uh, on the unity than the divisions of powers of the state. It was not ended with the enactment of the new fundamental law. Each and every time when uh, the government faced uh, a constitutional ban, the fundamental law was amended. In Hungary, the fundamental law no longer tells us what the government is prohibited to do. Instead, it tells what the government can do in spite of any constitutional criteria. In other words, the government has succeeded in turning the constitution from a means of restricting executive and legislative power into a tool of its own autocratic ambitions. How to summarize the constitutional situation in Hungary in 2014? In my view, at the moment, Hungary has a fundamental law, but has no constitution. I mean a constitution that is compatible with the idea of modern constitutionalism. Let's see what all these changes meant to a Hungarian uh, human rights NGO's life and how it is supposed to react these, uh, to these changes. I'm talking about a specific human rights NGO, namely, namely the Hungarian Civil Liberties Union, that was established in a democratic country in order to strengthen the democracy through the protection of a various fundamental rights. Firstly, under the circumstances the circumstances uh, of constitutional democracy, the necessary preconditions of the existence and the operation of this human rights NGO are just the same as the values it works for, the freedom of association, the freedom of speech, and the freedom of information, the freedom of self-determination. 
The fundamental rights system enabled Hungarian Civil Liberties Union to organize itself and to function, and didn't question the grounds of its existence, namely the fundamental freedoms recognized by the state. And the organization, taking its own freedom, has been working in order to let others' freedom be fulfilled. Secondly, under circumstances, since circumstances of uh, constitutional de democracy, the function of our NGO uh, could be described with the role of a public watchdog. It has been acting as a part of the correction mechanisms of the relation between the state and the citizen. It has been calling attention to problems to be corrected, mainly to human rights breaches, and with initiating legal procedures and performing advocacy works, um, it has been fighting for uh, adequate corrective measures. Thirdly, our human rights NGO ha uh, has been performing its activities on the basis of the constitutional norms that have been serving as the basis of the political system and the state, as the constitutional norms can serve as a stable ground for the, for the corrections of human rights breaches. It means that the constitutional circumstances have been serving the, as the framework of the professional activities of this human rights NGO. And finally, for its professional activities, the human rights NGO has been using the institutions and mechanisms of the constitutional state, initiated legal proceedings before courts, ombudsmen, the constitutional court, and other institutions, and conducted ne negotiations with lawmakers and other decision makers. That is how the human rights NGO can be the part of, of the system of checks and balances. Uh, I mean, uh, the notion of uh, the system of checks and balances can be used in a broader sense that doesn't only cover uh, the constitutional system of the state authorities, but also the media and the institutions of the civil society that perform um, uh, the public watchdog activities I already mentioned. And the human rights NGO, as the part of this system in its broader sense, uses the institutions of the system of checks and balances in, in its narrow sense for its own purposes. We just realized that the result of the deconstitutionalization I described before brought changes in the human rights NGO's life regarding all of these four aspects. Firstly, when the new system questions the fundamental rights, uh, it doesn't merely produce new tasks for us to deal with in our professional work, but also attacks the grounds, the necessary preconditions of the, of the organization's existence and operation. How does this dual effect uh, manifest in Hungary? Uh, today, the government wishes and tries to control non-governmental organizations to a greater extent that would be justifiable. For example, it tries to get the power to make the decisions about how those financial funds of the NGOs that were independent from the state are distributed. Another example can be the tricky way how the Hungarian state restricts freedom. Uh, there is, exists some unjustifiable restrictive rules on freedom, especially freedom of speech, that were never applied. Not a single journalist or a member of civil, civil rights groups uh, was punished for breaking these laws. But these laws succeed their object. The journalists and the NGOs criticizing the government seemingly voluntarily regulate their, themselves, refrain from fulfilling their tasks. The chilling effect works properly. The watchdog itself takes on its muzzle. Secondly, in the framework of the post-constitutional Hungary, the human rights NGO uh, doesn't act um, as a traditional watchdog that serves as an element of the correctional mechanisms uh, of the democracy, but rather becomes the opposition of the regime. Instead of individual abuses of power, the regime itself is in the focal point uh, of its operation. It challenges the political system not guaranteeing fundamental freedoms. Its aim is uh, the denial of the current regime and the restoration of constitutionalism. Implicitly, the human rights NGO do not uh, may not do this, may not do this on the uh, basis of the constitution that serves as the basis of the regime attacked, because its goal is to change the regime together with, with its fundamental law. 
when we use um, uh, the fundamental law of Hungary in our argumentation, we don't do this uh, because we are identifying ourselves with the values of the fundamental law, but only uh, because we found it useful in the given case. I tell you something uh, that shows our approach to the fundamental law uh, of Hungary. We always try to avoid um, referring uh, to it as a constitution. We use the title of the document, but we do not recognize it as an instrument of social integration and expression of community norms and values regarding the relations between uh, the individuals and the state. And finally, uh, we use much less the institutions offered by the state, the redress mechanisms for human rights breaches, for several reasons, because we are already disappointed uh, in their usefulness. Uh, or because we found uh, that uh, they are not fulfilling their task, or uh, they are not uh, independent, or they are not uh, operating properly. And because uh, we don't wish to legitimize the regime we are opposing with using its instruments. A good example for that is how we treat the newly established Data Protection and Freedom of Information Authority. Its predecessor, the Data Protection Ombudsman, used to be an important and effective partner to cooperate with, but the new authority was set up with the infringement of the independence of the Data Protection Ombudsman, whose term in office was brought to a premature end. We experienced that uh, the new authority doesn't work independently, independently from the government, and uh, it is in the way of reasoning uh, not against but for the, the restriction of informational rights. Therefore, we rarely turn to this authority, we rather take notice of its existence. But it doesn't mean that we never initiate individual cases before domestic courts and other institutions, but our strategic litigation cases are aiming not uh, the improvement of law through domestic fora, but through international institutions. Individual cases <clears throat> initiated before domestic courts are more and more for the sole purpose of exhausting domestic remedies in order to comply with the formal conditions of bringing a case before an international forum, especially the Strasbourg Court. As a result, Today, there is no traditional checks and balances within the state. There are no functioning independent bodies. Uh, there is no a worthwhile political opposition. Therefore, a human rights NGO, uh, instead of fulfilling its original function it was established to, takes over the function of being the opposition and tries to counterbalance the government's practically limitless power. Among the tools used by uh, the human rights NGO, uh, some became more important than they were before. The tools uh, aiming the raise of awareness of the public, for example, and the international fora, because with them the human rights NGO can communicate on the basis uh, of the same standards of human rights. The standards are the values of a democratic society and not the norms uh, of the fundamental law of Hungary. And last but not least, they remained uh, independent from the Hungarian government. This activity in the rhetoric uh, of the Hungarian government is a treasure against uh, the nation, a crime of being disloyal uh, to the country. I'm closing with bringing uh, up a, a paradox. If a human rights NGO in the framework of a non-constitutional system uses the institutions and redress mechanisms offered by the state for its professional purposes, it uses mechanisms of a system that in the meantime is denied by it and wished to be exceeded. Therefore, a human rights NGO shall select its means carefully. Only independent institutions may be used fairly. These are mainly the courts and exceptionally the constitutional courts in Hungary. But legislation shall not be legitimized by participation on the mock debates that are current in our country. Thank you for your attention.